Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'll be briefly talking about miscegenation, uh, another concept uh, really important to post-colonial studies and a practice that in so many ways defined the colonial contact phase and the colonial exchange. Now, literally, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, miscegenation is the sexual union of different races. Uh, within the colonial context, it always implied the sexual union or sexual contact between the European colonizers and their native others. And it was seen as a negative practice and as something that was sometimes legally not permitted. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that there was no sexual contact, but it was not accepted and it was discouraged. Now, if you look at the colonial infrastructure, how the colonizers lived, the entire infrastructure was built at reducing this contact because the colonizers usually always lived in the white or the European part of the town. And then the natives lived in the Kasba or in the native part of the town. Uh, so most of the times within all colonial cultures, both French as well as English, uh, the efforts were made legally and otherwise to make sure that the two races do not mix. Now, this all was not a fluke or, uh, you know, just random. It was based in certain beliefs which were considered scientific uh, through some of the works of anthropologists, but also the most prominent person whose work really influenced this way of thinking about race and superiority of white races was uh, Arthur Gobineau, the French aristocrat who wrote a monumental about 1400 page work, which is translated as an essay on the inequality of the human races, where he, through his pseudoscience or through his research proves that European races were superior to others. And within Europe, the aristocrats were better than the lower cadres of the society. And this work had a huge influence in the colonies and on the colonial policy about miscegenation and about mixing of races. Now, uh, there are other scholars too who eventually read this racial mixture as a positive thing miscegenation as a positive thing. And of them, the most important, of course, is Gilberto Freire from Brazil, famous for about three of his works, but the most important is translated as The Masters and the Slaves, published in 1933. Freire actually claimed and argued that Brazil was a unique nation and that Portuguese colonialism was unique because it allowed the mixing of the races. And that because of that miscegenation, Brazil comes to be a unique culture in which there is an acceptance of different races. So please keep in mind that in certain quarters, especially people who follow Gilberto Freire, miscegenation was seen as a positive thing. But by and large within the colony, the mixing of European races with the native was considered illegal was frowned upon and was not permitted. Then we see the miscegenation also having a huge impact in the American South, especially because of the large number of the slave population, the African-American slaves who were brought here. And so the policies in the American South during slavery were that there should be absolutely no legal sexual contact between the owners and the slaves. <clears throat> Now, of course, we know that uh, that rape was common and there were illegal section, sexual oppression of the slaves by the masters, and there are huge records of that available too. But miscegenation as an accepted norm uh, was not legally possible. And if you want to see an example of how bad a thing it was considered, you can read, you know, Absalom, Absalom, right? You can read how in Faulkner's novel, the main character who wants a real son, his biggest fear is the fear of miscegenation. He does have a son, but the son is not pure white, 
right? And hence his quest to have a heir or a son. So in the American South, the legal mixing of races until very recently was not permitted, was considered illegal and was dangerous. And even now, to some extent, it is frowned upon. And if you are unlucky enough to run into someone who has those kind of views and you're a mixed couple, or if you're romantically involved, you will face some form or the other form of discrimination. So overall, miscegenation based in pseudo theories of racial superiority ensured that within the colonies, the colonizers kept their distance and legally at least discouraged the sexual contact between the colonizers and the native population. Now we do know historically that these things did happen, that maybe, you know, the races do mix, but it was never considered an accepted practice. It was frowned upon and was most of the times illegal. So these are some of the thoughts that I have about miscegenation, about mixing of races within the colonial context. I hope these are useful to you. Uh, I will also post some links in the description to some of the authors that I have referred to. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. And if you like what I offer here on this channel, uh, please do subscribe. And thank you so much, and I will see you next time.